Hi everyone, uh, welcome to our recap of PG Tips. Um, I've got Stephen Soans, um, Becky, Julia and Nicholas here with me um, and we're going to recap some of the questions that we had at the session. So one of the questions that we had that we spent quite a lot of time on was um, how to know if you should do a PhD, how do you decide that you want to do one? Um, so can anyone sort of speak to that? Yes, uh, happy to, to come in on that. Um, I just think it's such an important question, this one. Uh, so whoever asked that, thank you for asking. Um, I think everyone should ask this of themselves, uh, even if you're someone who right from the start has thought they've always wanted to do research. Uh, it may just be a case of double checking and just looking through. Um, but, you know, talk to people who are doing PhDs, uh, you know, of course, talk to your academics make certain that you've got all the information you need to make an informed decision uh, and take stock, you know, take a step back. Uh, for myself, it was just a short holiday where I was writing the proposal, but also going for long walks to think about it and make certain it felt right. Um, and, you know, ask your contacts the difficult questions, not just the good questions, not just the uh, gold gilded questions about how lovely it can all be, but also, you know, what's the worst thing that's happened, you know, what happens when things go wrong? How do they keep connected and keep their friends and all these sorts of things? Um, so, you know, just go in with your eyes open. That's the main thing. But uh, a really gr great question to ask. Julia, did you have anything you could add to that? Yes, yeah, I think that's a very important question, as Stephen is saying. And I mean, it's never you can never really be sure right but it's really important to just question it and 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 really i think take a moment to wonder um what is it i want um in a phd why do i want to do it and you know you 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 might not get the answers um but i think it, by by considering that what is important is just realize that no phd experience is always the same right so here a couple of us have done a phd but i think we've had um, different experiences for different reasons, whatever they may be. So just don't expect to have exactly the same experience as the people you've talked to and just go in with a with an open mind, right? In a, with a certain flexibility. Be ready to accept that some things might go good and well or something might be more difficult, but it's okay. It doesn't mean you're not as good as somebody else or or anything along these lines. It's just that it's very hard. It's not just like an undergrad or a master that is very structured, right? So I think going in with an open mind and, and a little bit of passion for what you want to research <laughs> are the two most important things. Fab, thank you both. Um, so I suppose once you've decided uh, you want to do a PhD, um, uh, we have a question here on funding. Uh, Becky, I don't know whether you can speak to how advisable it is to have funding and also how people might go about finding that. Yes, I'm happy to answer that. Um, so I think it's a really good idea to have funding. Um, a PhD is quite long. Um, it's between three and four years if you're working full time and it will occupy a lot of your time so it's quite difficult to try and support yourself with maybe part-time working and things like that some people are able to do that some people will teach during their phd um but you need to be able to support yourself for quite a number of years um so there's no prerequisite to have funding some people will have their own um personal finances or a sponsor who will be able to support them during that time but others won't and they will find it difficult as you will need to meet um, fees and you'll need to be able to support yourself um, whilst you're studying. Um, so there are a number of options for funding. Most of them will provide you with um, support for your fees. So they'll pay your fees for um, three or four years. And that um, depends on whether you are a home fee student or an overseas fee student. It gets quite expensive quite quickly if you're overseas fees and you're paying more than £20,000 a year. Um, and you will also be given a stipend, which works a little bit like a tax free salary. So you're paid every month and that will give you um, money to pay your rent, buy food, um, pay your bills, and generally support yourself while you're studying. Some sources of funding will also provide you with um, small research and training um, grant, which will cover the costs of um, various different research expenses. So, for example, maybe travel or going to conferences, being able to put, to buy um, particular 
items that you need. Maybe it's consumables for your lab work or going into particular archives, being able to receive particular things. Um, there are also sources of funding for that sort of work that you can access during your studies. And some sources of funding are available once you have begun. But certainly we would recommend very strongly that you look into how you're going to support yourself financially during this um, as, as previous people have said, it's a long journey and it has its ups and downs. Um, so if you're not having to worry about finances during that time, then that's probably a good thing. Um, and there are a lot of different sources of funding and we can share some resources on that, um, which they're all based on different particular eligibility criteria. So you must um, search wide, um, search high and low because there's a lot of different opportunities out there, but it really depends on your personal circumstances. Some things are open to people from particular demographic areas um, and things like that. Uh, some are open only to specific research areas as well. And there are some structured programmes um, where you might join for a taught element before progressing to research. So it's really worth doing your homework before you start. Great, thank you. That's really uh, helpful. I am going to... If I could also just, oh. I think it's important as Rebecca saying, you know, um, do your do your own work. Um, really get to know the funding bodies you want to apply to. Read through all, not only the guidelines and what you really need to write, but also what it is they usually fund. What what are you know the about section that tells you what these funding bodies want, so you learn their language as well. It's a lot about. Uh, it's just like applying for a job, really. You know, getting to know the company you want to apply and work with. Um, and also, if in case you're looking, you know, at an academic career, which, which is sometimes the case when you start a PhD, though, you know, you might decide not to go into that um, later on as you, after four years, you might be like, well, I'm done with academia, who knows? <laughs> but, you know, if you decide to go on, what's important is also realizing that the funding sometimes is a really strong part of your CV because it shows that another funding body, whether or a university or a specific charitable foundation decided to that your idea was great and wanted to found to fund it. So that's also why it looks good um, to have funding uh, on top of you know surviving. <laughs> Thank you. 